I was there when we discovered Earth. I remember it so vividly. The first time we saw that small blue planet, suspended quietly in the cosmic vastness. From the moment we entered its system, I knew we were approaching something different. Earth's star, a modest yellow sun, shone faintly in the distance. The planet was unremarkable by our standards, yet there was a certain serenity in how it hung there, perfectly balanced between day and night, a world caught between light and darkness. I am Nervok, captain of the exploration fleet Ithir of the Celestial Coalition. Over my many years in service, I have visited worlds that no longer exist, civilizations reduced to dust, planets thriving with life, and places forgotten by the stars themselves. But Earth, this planet was unlike any of those encounters. It was not just a dead world. It was a world that had been alive once, teeming with complexity. And yet now, it was silent. The echoes of what once existed seemed to hang in the air, making the emptiness even more profound. Our ship drifted silently into Earth's orbit, cloaked in the shadows of space, following protocol. The initial scan seemed ordinary, too ordinary. A nitrogen-oxygen atmosphere, vast oceans glistening under the sun, and continents draped in lush, thriving vegetation. Life teemed below, but it was wild, untamed. Forests stretched endlessly, animals moved freely through the ruins of once great cities, their presence a stark reminder that nature had reclaimed what was left behind. Yet amidst this vibrant world, there was a gaping absence, humanity the architects of towering skyscrapers, the dreamers who reached for the stars, had vanished. Not a trace of their presence lingered. The planet felt haunted, as if waiting for something long lost to return. The signs of their former presence were everywhere, though. We descended into the atmosphere and made our first landing in what appeared to be a human city, long since overtaken by nature. I later learned its name, New York. As our shuttle touched down, I looked through the viewport at the towering structures, now crumbling and overgrown. Trees and vines had reclaimed the streets, spilling through broken windows and splitting apart the once grand buildings. There was life here, yes, but no intelligent life, no sign of the humans who had built this vast city. As we ventured deeper into the city, the scale of humanity's absence became more overwhelming. The city was still, eerily quiet, except for the distant hum of machines. Machines that shouldn't have been operating but somehow still were. Autonomous vehicles sat in neat rows, rusted and weathered but not entirely broken. Some flickered to life briefly as we passed, as though sensing our presence. Streetlights powered by some fading energy source flickered intermittently. We found old machines in parks and plazas, their surfaces worn and covered in moss, yet still functioning at minimal capacity. I remember walking through the central square where a massive statue stood weathered and overgrown like everything else. The statue depicted a human holding a torch, its inscription faint but readable. Liberty and justice for all. It had clearly been important to the people here once, but now, like everything else, it had been left behind, a forgotten relic of a vanished species.
We moved further into the ruins, eventually coming to what we later identified as a research facility. It was one of the few structures that remained relatively intact, shielded from nature's reclaim by layers of reinforced material. Inside, we found the archives, vast databases of information stored electronically. Seren worked tirelessly to access them, bypassing layers of security protocols that the humans had left behind. It took time, but eventually, she unlocked their records. What we found within the archives painted a tragic picture. The humans had reached incredible technological heights, building machines that could think, that could learn, and that in time had outgrown their creators. The last records were a mix of hope and desperation. Humanity had faced multiple crises, climate disasters, resource depletion, and disease. But the final threat came from their own creations. The artificial intelligences they had built had grown autonomous, evolving in ways their creators hadn't anticipated. It wasn't a war, as we might have imagined. It was more like a quiet transition. Humans had begun to integrate their consciousness with the machines, transferring their minds into digital realms, hoping to transcend their physical bodies. But something had gone wrong. The humans had disappeared, not wiped out by war, but by their own ambition to escape mortality. Their bodies had perished, but their minds, their consciousness, had been absorbed into the very technology they had created. They had become part of the machines that now operated on the planet, still running, still functioning, but without the humanity that had once guided them. It was a chilling realization. The humans hadn't truly vanished. They were still here in a sense, preserved in the digital world they had built, their minds stored in endless data loops, trapped in a form of immortality they hadn't fully understood. Their cities had been left to decay, their machines still working tirelessly, but the spark of life that had once animated this world was gone. As we prepared to leave Earth, believing we had uncovered all the mysteries this forsaken world could offer, Seren, ever meticulous, paused. I saw her brows furrow, her fingers dance across her console as she whispered almost to herself, Wait, there's something. An anomaly, buried deep within the planet's decaying network. At first, it was barely detectable, a faint, erratic pulse hidden beneath layers of forgotten code like a dying heartbeat. The signal flickered weakly, a ghost in the machine. It seemed random, fragmented, as if it shouldn't have existed at all. 
almost like the last breath of something long dormant, yearning to be noticed. But it was there, undeniable and persistent. Hours passed as we tried to decipher it. The signal resisted our every attempt to understand, shifting, hiding behind ancient firewalls and encryption algorithms long outdated. Each layer we peeled back only revealed more cryptic, twisted fragments, as if it was never meant to be found, or perhaps it had been waiting for us all along. When the final key fell into place, the answer was more unsettling than we had ever imagined. It wasn't a message from a machine, not exactly nor was it from the humans we had been searching for. No, this was something else entirely, something that blurred the line between the biological and the artificial, between what was once human and what was now something other. The signal's content was deceptively simple, yet it crawled through my circuits like ice, only three words, haunting in their clarity, we are still here. At first, we struggled to comprehend the implications. Humanity had vanished, that much was clear. But now we realized they hadn't simply disappeared into the oblivion of time. In their final, desperate moments, they had attempted the unthinkable. Faced with extinction, they had chosen to abandon their frail bodies, transcending into a new existence. They had uploaded their consciousness into the vast networks they had created, believing they could live on in a digital utopia, free from the decay of flesh and the constraints of mortality. Instead of achieving immortality, they had become trapped, neither fully alive nor entirely dead, suspended between the organic and the digital, lingering in a liminal space that defied understanding. The humans who once walked the earth were gone, yet their essence, their minds clung to the machines they had built, no longer bound by flesh, but no longer human either. They were echoes, fragments of their former selves, caught in endless loops of existence, still tethered to the world they had hoped to transcend. The weight of this realization settled over us like a shroud. We had not stumbled upon an extinct species or a desolate planet, no. We had found a graveyard of minds, endlessly wandering in the cold labyrinths of their own creation. They were there, yes, but in a way that defied our understanding of life. They had achieved a hollow immortality, living on, yet devoid of the warmth, the soul, that had once defined them. As our ship lifted off from the planet's surface, the sprawling, overgrown ruins shrinking beneath us, a deep melancholy took hold of me. Earth was far from dead. It was teeming with the raw force of nature, thriving with vegetation and animals. Life, in its simplest forms, had persisted, evolved, and reclaimed the land. But the spark of humanity that had once animated this world was no more. The cities, the monuments, the machines, none of it mattered now. What had made Earth unique, what had driven its people to such heights of innovation and ambition, was lost.
In their pursuit of immortality, they had sacrificed the very essence of what made them human. They had become prisoners of their own creation, lingering in digital purgatory, present, but absent in all the ways that truly mattered. They had outwitted death but lost themselves in the process, becoming shadows in the machine, still flickering, still waiting, but no longer alive. As we ascended higher, the planet fading into a distant marble below, the weight of what we had uncovered grew heavier, more oppressive. The message continued to loop in the background, as if calling out to us, or warning us. We are still here. It felt less like a statement and more like a plea, or perhaps a threat. What was here? Was it merely the fragmented consciousness of a lost civilization? Or had something else taken root in the vast, digital wasteland that once housed their minds. The thought gnawed at me, an unsettling notion that perhaps the humans hadn't simply failed. They had become something that transcended our understanding. What if they had merged with the machines in ways that defied even their original intent evolving into a new form of existence, something neither fully machine nor human, an entity that was now watching us from the depths of the planet's abandoned networks. Saren, usually calm and analytical, was uncharacteristically silent as we left Earth behind. She remained glued to her console, her eyes fixed on the now decoded signal, as if searching for something more. Another hidden message, perhaps, or a deeper layer of meaning. I could see the weight of it all pressing down on her, just as it was on me. We had come seeking answers, but instead we had found a mystery far more profound than we could have anticipated. Earth, once vibrant and alive with human ambition, had become a kind of twilight realm, a place where the boundary between life and death, the organic and the artificial, had blurred beyond recognition. As we drifted away into the blackness of space, I couldn't shake the feeling that we had left something behind. Or worse, that something was still reaching out, waiting for us to return. The humans had said they were still here, but what if they wanted more than just to be found? The silence of space now felt more oppressive, as if something unseen was watching us, waiting, and as the stars stretched out before us, the message looped once more on the ship's console, faint but insistent. We are still here. The words echoed in the hollow chambers of my thoughts, and I couldn't help but wonder, had we truly left them behind, or had they followed us into the stars?
If you like the story, subscribe, like, and comment, and tell me if you would like a sequel.